Hey, this is Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys, and I love the Grandstanders! <laughs> Take it away, kid. Welcome to another edition of Grand Center's Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's Milton's first son, Tim Hoey. <laughs> well, boys, we won the World Series! Hey, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God, boys! There we go! There we go! <laughs> we That's what I'm talking we about. We spoiled yeah. clientele. Oh, yeah. I know. Four times in 15 years, the Boston Red Sox are World Series champions. Not only does he never get old, this may have been as m enjoyable as yeah. a World Series I've champion of anyone, anyone, right? Just crazy. You know, I, I, it brought me back to 1986. I was all by myself in my apartment. I'm laying we lost that time. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I don't know how it brought you now, back now to My six. grandfather had told my mother. But that, that sixth he, game we he went was, there. He, he was a season ticket holder. I mean, my mother and her sisters uh, would give him season tickets to the Red Sox for Christmas every year. That's pretty good. Can you imagine? I think it was 20 <laughs> cents exactly. a, a ticket back, but right. he was off the boat from Ireland. Like it sucks. <clears throat> and he said he just wanted to live long enough to see the Red Sox win a World Series. Yeah. Well, he died in 1958, okay? So that always, like, resonated with me. So I'm laying on my couch in 1986, and, and the, it's two outs, and the Red Sox are winning. Two strikes. And I remember <laughs> sitting up on my couch, and I said, oh, my God, Take the Red Sox are going to win the World Series. And then, of course, we all know what happened. And then <laughs> I don't remember Alvin that. Charlie. All I know is that we won four well, times. Well, whatever. Just to think that we have four now. It's unbelievable. 11 yeah. championships for the city in the last 18 years. Yes, yeah, so I hope you enjoy. First of all, happy Halloween. I hope you enjoyed yeah, the well, parade. Yeah. This What a just a remarkable time yeah. to be in Boston. And the wonderful thing is that this is a young team that could do this even next year. But this is one of the most likable teams that I remember in our four major sports in the last 50 years. Yeah, this, every, Just the likability factor. Everybody except for one guy. Like, there's one guy, David Price. I find it, still find it hard. Oh, no. Know. I tell you something. David Price was the lead story in this World Series. We always yeah. talk about the Bruins mentality of guys willing to step up and do whatever they need to do. For the sake he of was the team. A, and that guy did that. I'm not bullpen. talking about from a performance Oh, I know. I, I'm talking about from a personality. Oh, like, there's nothing no, wrong no, with everyone him. Everyone other than him, I, I love them all. I love them. But there's him, nothing love wrong him. with David I, Price. I, he's different. He's a sour guy. He's he's fine. Look, I, I like a guy. He's who, an eccentric type. I like a guy between the lines who's willing to give up. If we're talking about between the lines. That's all I'm worried about. about. I don't really care no, about all the others. we're talking about likability, though, Scott. Absolutely. He's... Look, Pierce, well, Pets, just keep him in the ben background, like the rest of them. I really Price. liked him. Well, uh, sale, <laughs> all of them. You know? I really I mean, liked him very, a couple of days ago when he was pitching oh, seven too. innings. I, I did too, and I'll root for him. I liked I Sale when he him. was pitching better too. I liked him better when he was pitching better. And, and, and I do understand exactly. he has a huge show, but he created a lot of this mess for himself. I know, but and, I don't want to get into that. This is about I, I celebration. No, no, just this is about celebration, and I, you know, this is the opposite of the usual. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. First of all, and Alex Cora. As fun a wow. manager, a coach in this town as we've ever seen. And a guy who obviously played for the Red Sox, but he gets it. Francona got it, but he may, Cora may even get it even more. Well, you learned at Francona's knee. He was on that team with Francona. We have to give the Red Sox uh, upper brass huge kudos for picking the right guy. Absolutely. Brookline's own John Henry. Kudos to you, John Henry. Mm -hmm. You have brought to the Red Sox organization, Ford's uh, World Series championships. 
in 15 years, and you're a big part of it because you're willing to spend the money when it needs to be you know, spent. They brought two great managers in Francona and Cora. Some, somebody was funny. They said Cora's salary is like a, a, like a line error on, you know, compared to the salaries. He makes 800 grand a year on a $233 million payroll. Yeah, they're going to take care of him, Timmy. I'm they pretty better. sure they about should, that. Because he was as important as any player on that field. Well, he might get a big OT endorsement like that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, right, exactly. Talk about having the whole package, uh, the analytics, the uh, relationship skills with the players, the communication skills, the guts to pull a price in the second inning. Everything the guts to go with the Valdi for seven. He's know, our yeah. he's our dream manager. He's the manager that we're sitting there on our couch, and he does pretty much every move that we ever imagined. Do you remember do. a couple of years ago, uh, Tito out coached uh, the Red Sox. Well, well, well absolutely. The Indians. Oh, yeah. Well, for the Indians, he literally the manager won that series, and our manager lost. He was it. he was aggressive. He was like ag- he, he pushed was all the way. Cora pushed every button that was correct. But he was aggressive, and that's what you need. You have to play for that day. Nothing else matters. The tomorrow doesn't matter. Yes, it doesn't on the matter. Opposite side you of play for the day. Robert's pushing all the wrong buttons. He kept playing for three days ahead of time. Well, he was, they, gonna, he yeah. was going off the book from before the game. He wasn't believing yeah. what his eyes were telling him. Well, he was managing his team, as Cora said, and I thought that. He wasn't managing their team. Yeah. He wasn't trying to guess what they were doing next, the Astros, Yankees, or the Dodgers. He was just worried about his what's own team or what's team. best for our team uh, maybe, at this game. Maybe one right. of the best managerial jobs you'll ever see. I've Absolutely. ever seen in my life. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the greatest Red Sox team in history, bar none. 119 wins. How do you argue with it? You can't, can't argue, argue with, with it. it. Baseball's a numbers game, and you just can't argue with the numbers. Yeah, okay. they had the numbers. There was a reason why Stephen <laughs> Pierce was on every team in the American League East. Yeah. It wasn't because he was yeah. great. <laughs> but, but, but he has a batting third. No, I know. He didn't have a batting in the bottom of the lineup. But I mean, he saw some, maybe he saw uh, just something in the moment that Pierce had going on, and he put him third in a mega lineup. He's batting third. The most remarkable part of this playoffs has been that our ALCS MVP, our World Series MVP, our arguably fourth outfielders <laughs> right yeah, you yeah. know yeah. look we had Jackie Bradley possibly not oh even God, in the series. league next series. year right we had Stephen Pierce he's just a reserve first baseman yeah. and a reserve outfielder i forgot how close Jackie Bradley was to like being gone yeah. right at one point the bat in 170 oh, 160 everyone, everyone wanted to put him back down to the minors for a few months because you couldn't see Jackie Bradley Jr being that you're a starting center fielder on a World Series team during the season. Yeah. You couldn't picture that in October. Except for a ninth inning defensive purpose. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what he did, and look, he only got what, a couple of hits, but yeah. they were they, they were gigantic. Yeah, they were gigantic. All right, so boys, Wookie Betts and JD Martinez, they carried us all year. All year. Yeah. But they were not the men in the playoffs, yeah. right? But well, Martinez I, I, had some some but Yeah, Martinez good, yeah. did. Yeah. Martinez was yeah, hit his singles he, here and He there. was steady, and he I, he probably hit close to three. But it's he remarkable. Three, we didn't get the off- He was hitting about 330. Yeah. I remember being at a game and looking up. It said 330. But we didn't get the offensive input no. that we would have expected to win a World Series against the teams that we did beat with Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez not being at the I best. I couldn't be mad at them because I just had to remember they got us here. They're the ones right? that Absolutely. got us here, yeah. you know. And they do. They did chip and Mookie chipped in with a couple of defensive plays with the arm of the glove, a couple of base running. Uh, yeah, the, yeah Mookie Lewis defensively there. was yeah. huge. Sure was. All right, Chris Sale. Yeah, we kind of criticized him. Okay, we did criticize him yeah. last week as kind of being a you little criticized. I did him. as being a paper tiger, yeah. right? I wanted to see him out in the field. If he, you're the hurt or you're not hurt, you're the pregnant or you're not pregnant. Great ninth inning, though. Yeah. Great ninth so, inning. So. Alex Cora, because he has the complete feel of yeah. everything, not only yeah. on the field, his players, but how Boston fans react. Who does he put in to finish the game in the yeah. World Series but Chris Sale? How apropos. It yeah. works well for Chris. And, you know, he comes in. And, and, and Craig Kimbrell, it was nice knowing you. He hit, right. he hit 96 for the first time in a month in that ninth inning. Okay, so, boys, can we kind of stop about how uh, – Chris Sale has shoulder problems? No, no, Scotty, I, I do think he has shoulder problems. I think he threw 96 despite the... Oh, oh I don't no, no. no. You no, cannot I throw think. 96 with sh- a major shoulder problem. Yeah, he, he just had been holding himself back you before think so? this. 
See, yeah. I think there was something physically wrong with him. And, and he finally and, and I, and I mentally think he just allowed there, himself to let it go. I think he just said, you know what? I'm here for three outs. I, you know, you ever been, you've played sports yeah. and you've had an injury and you play through it and you still give it 100%. He you was, think you're giving it 100, percent but you're pull, you're pulling your punches just a what little. What I'm bit. saying is, he had three outs to go, and he said, "You know what? My shoulder might hurt. I don't care. I am throwing this ball as hard as I Look, can." Look, we were always ahead in every series we played. We only lost three games. Things would have been different, and you would have seen Chris Sale a lot more if this hit, these had it, been tighter it, series. It didn't feel like we were ahead three to one. It, like to, for me, I didn't because the games were so close, and Kimber was such a question mark. In the in the, in the um, <clears throat> World Series. When we lost that 18 inning game, the next day was Erod. Things could have gone downhill quickly. And Kimball gave me the, the sense. Kimball gave me the sense like no lead was safe. Yeah. Like that was the yeah. feeling well, I had. Because no Kimble. lead was safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, like, that's why you felt that way. Four run lead. Uh, you know, we needed to go to the ninth like a four run lead for Sale coming in for me to feel like semi comfortable. But the fact is, <clears throat> we would have swept if. if Kinsler can make a simple oh throw God. from yeah. second base. Right? That was high so this high. series wasn't as close as you think it was. Of course, the Mitch Moreland three-run oh. homer in game four. That kick-started the offense. And again. you know what's funny? Very similar to Bernie Puig, Corbo Puig, in 1975. Yeah. Oh, Puig's running around the bases, kissing his biceps. Moreland's yeah. home oh. run went 75 feet further than Puig's. Oh, my God. Moreland's <laughs> shot it? was a bomb. Moreland's yeah, almost yeah. went out of the yeah, stadium. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if he ever hit a ball further in his life. Much longer it was a oh, freaking shot. It was an absolute rocket. And Puig, because he's a dick, he... Kissing his biceps. No, right, but he... And doing this, me, me, yeah. But he didn't even turn around, which pitchers really enjoy when they... The outfielders yeah. don't the even turn around. Moreland's pointing at the dugout to his teammates, yeah. and Puig's pointing to himself. Yeah, that was that said a lot about the whole series. Great point. All right, Nathan Avaldi. I think we all have a sports crush on Nathan Avaldi right guy. now. Probably none of us really knew who he was before he came yeah. to well, the Red Sox. Well, he did catch our attention the first two games. He no, but when he, before he came oh, to the Red Sox, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't even know yeah, how to spell. He came his out name. of nowhere to beat the Yankees. His whole team. Yeah, yeah. So Nathan Avaldi. Obviously pitches really well in the extra inning game, but he basically helped save all three series with coming out of the bullpen, the way he yes. was starting. Yes. This guy, if you had to give him an MVP I was for all the that. playoffs, wouldn't you give it to me? I would. Of I said, you just took the words right yeah. out of my mouth. He was the steadying. The overall playoff MVP. The overall, yeah. Avaldi's got it. We're good. Like that warm and fuzzy yeah. feeling when he was on the mound. He gave you that extra warm and fuzzy feeling. Okay. 100 miles per hour will do that 100, for you. 101? Oh my God. And then an 86 mile an hour curve after that. People didn't know what was they didn't know what was going on at the plate. Okay, let's join Nathan Avaldi love. Let's get all we want out of yeah. it right now because I'm going to tell you win. something. Right now, Nathan Avaldi is free agent, and this is a prediction. Right. Nathan Avaldi will be playing for the New York Yankees next year. You can take that right. to the bank. On that subject, what's he worth? Well, four years, twenty million dollars. I would think. He's a, he, he can start, and he throws a hundred. You don't miles think they hour. get a f four or fifteen million? No, the Yankees got rid of a bunch. They're not going to let him go by a second. Remember, time. Yankees probably aren't going to re-sign Sabathia. They've yeah. got plenty of money. They're the New York Yankees, and they are reeling by the fact that the Red Sox have won this they're World Series again. They're taking a beating in New York. And we yeah. know what New York likes to do. They like to steal Red Sox. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, so, Johnny Damon. Uh, oh, it goes down the line for the last 50 years. Who, you think who the, the weak sister there in center field after 07? Oh, Ellsbury, oh, Damon. Ellsbury. Oh, yeah. Think uh, the Sox might do a Patriots and say, hey, Nathan, go out and see what, what office you get. Come back and bring them back to us, and we'll see what we can do. I, if I was the Boston Red Sox, I'd be talking to Nathan Rivaldi right now and see yeah. if they can yeah. cut a deal. Because if you go with sale, price, and Rivaldi. I'm sure they have a number for him. Yeah, and absolutely. And Porcello, that's four pretty good guys. Right Look, now. remember, guys, you we freed up money with Han Hanley Ramirez. We have freed up money um, with Kimball because we can, well, yeah. we'll go to that subject, but I don't think we'll be signing Kimball. How about Pablo? How much? No, uh, Pablo is that the never-ending contract. Three I more think years it's, with him. Ben Charrington just keeps on giving. Yeah, I think it's two more years. I think it was a five-year deal, and that he would be in what 18, year three? Eighteen million yeah. a year. Yeah, that's. But look, they're even still paying Rusty Castillo eight million dollars yeah. a year, and this counts on the luxury tax. So this is important. All right, we're giving our props to Dave Dabrowski. We've actually been pretty kind to him on this yeah. show, so we haven't been that cruel. Not but, about the bullpen, we weren't. Well, it right. helped. It helped that Joe Kelly got so hot. But I he was at, right at the right time. So who whispered? Was it Cora who whispered in his ear? Somebody get inside of his head and said, "Throw strikes." 
Timmy, we couldn't even believe that Joe Kelly was on the playoff rush. Yeah. Do you remember the game we, we were at? I think it was 9 to nothing. It was the middle of August, and we had a nine-game lead. I think we were winning 9 to nothing. Not, and he nine came to nothing. in and walked like and we, five I think we went down straight. behind the plate, and he walked four guys straight. <laughs> right, exactly. And I said, if this guy can't walk, if this guy can't throw a strike with a nine-run lead, nine games in first yeah. place, what is he going to do in September or in October? I know. Yeah. I'm like a lot of people. Well, you were answered. <laughs> Do you remember I, how frustrated we were yeah. that night with him? Oh, oh my God, yeah. Well, it was like Pomerantz. No lead was safe. Yeah. You, because you couldn't get any outs from these guys. Thank God Pomerantz never made a, an appearance. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I, I feared that he would. Oh, yeah, right. Well, yeah. That's that, what Nathan Evaldi did. So, he saved you from Pomerantz. On Pomerance. the subject, is Kelly the closer next year? That's a great question. There's a lot of um, relievers in the free agent market. So Joe Kelly would be smart to get a contract awful yeah. quick before people remember really? that he's Joe Kelly. So, and, um, and his you know, Kimball did live up to the super stud closer label for most of his contract. Most he did live up contract. to it. Look, if you can get uh, Kelly for 4 to $5 million a year for a two- two-year deal. I think oh, you definitely try to make him your closer. Because Absolutely. No more than two years. He has. Yeah. If they can, if Kimball can keep whispering mm-hmm. sweet nothings in his ear and getting him to play like he played in the, in the series. Even Cora, yeah. If we could, Cora, yeah. if we could get that. Yeah, that's what, well, look, they're going to have to reduce some payroll in certain positions so they can pay other guys. And if you want to pay Nathan Navaldi, you're going to have to What do they do with uh, Dustin Pedroia? All right, wait, 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 we're going to, oh, come wait, on. Wait, but to, okay. to, to, to just wrap it up, do we trust Kelly to be that guy next year? I would trust him early on. You know, you can always get another guy to close. Such a and critical. We, we saw that. Maybe I don't Barnes. trust him. Don't, don't trust we, to give Barnes. To just give him the close. All I'm worried about is the playoffs now. This is like the Patriots <laughs> now. Know, and we realize you don't need a closer in the yeah. playoffs. You just you have your starting pitching play. Yeah, April and May just extended uh, yeah. spring training. So we have a new word. It's called Rover. We really yeah. didn't hear about this. You know, you think about it as, as longtime sports fans that we pretty much have heard every word imaginable but Does rover is a spot starter slash reliever yeah so a ro- right but now a rover is basically a starter who in between his starts when usually these guys throw in between anyways yeah. can give you an inning or two in the playoffs instead of a bullpen session yeah right and so you got to give your props and this is really a football mentality isn't it tim well they i all wanted to you know work. what i did i i saw this broken down in the there's a reason these guys are relievers because they're not quali- they're not starter quality. Yeah. Right. So they, they couldn't make it as a starter. That's why they're in the bullpen. Except maybe your, you know, Rivera or Kimbrell. Or, so you have a guy like Porcello so who, who's it, very key yeah. in the playoffs. So your starters Aiken. are better pitchers. Absolutely. There's of course. a reason they're starters. There's a reason they're getting 30, 25 million a year. Yeah. So this is going to be something in negotiations in the future with starting pitchers when you're talking contracts. Hey, would you be? Uh, you know, it would be acceptable if you pitched in the ro- playoffs and rover during the playoffs. If the guy box is like, okay, well, it you was nice talking to you. Right? None of these guys boxed. It seemed to a man, every one of them was going to Cora before it and saying, "I'll I'm do whatever you need good me to do." Three, yeah. Sale was saying it. Price was saying yeah. it. It's a was football saying, mentality. That's what, what football what do, players do. What do you do? need me to do? Yeah. That's what they buy in. All right, boys. I love Raphael Devers. I love. Raphael Devers now, and I love him for the future. Let's talk because, about that play at third base. But Oh, right. But nobody's upside, hitting-wise. Isn't that going to be the most exciting thing to see next year well, is the he, development he of can, him as offensively? He puts good at-bats together against good pitching. That's He what sure does. 120 years old? Right, yeah, 21. 21 years old, and I think he's just going to turn 22. A violent swing. A swing it's, that it's, literally, he's a guy now that you're not going to go yeah. and make a sandwich until he finishes yeah. I'm always shocked bit. when I see his face, how young he looks. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a just baby, a baby. Face, He looks yeah. like a baby, doesn't yeah. he? Oh, my God. But, right, so how that's about, exciting let's for Let's just the talk future. one second about that play at third base. That was a series changer. Mm. Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. that backhand. And then he came up. I don't think he's made a throw that good all year. No. That was right mm-hmm. in, in the chest. Because he usually – uh, yeah. Oh, one bounce, two Usually bounces. pulling the first baseman's groin, trying to reach for it, you know. Look, you're going to grow as a player in those playoffs. Yeah. You know, regular season's going to seem like nothing when you're in that kind of environment. Well, guys react in one, two different ways, and everyone reacted in a clutch manner for the Red Sox. And we can time. give Cora credit for that because he put yeah. them in the right frame of mind. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's go into right, – because you, the boys have said it. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the free agents – for this year, Ooh. so Kimbrel gone. Yeah, you know I don't know. He carried us all year. He's carried us for the last two years. He's been, he's been, he, he has overwhelming stuff. So you think Hira gone? 
Are you going to pay here, him $12, here. $15 million? Gone. Gone. Okay. Uh, Joe Kelly here or gone, Joe? Um, I like him here, but I'm afraid he's gone. I'm surrounded by Irishmen. I would hope that Joe Kelly would... Oh, I want him here, you know, My, my buddy we were at the game, he calls him Bazooka Joe. <laughs> All right, him. so Joe Kelly stays. Nathan Evaldi, you already wait, know wait, he's... About Kelly. He's, about, he's, Kelly, about, Kelly. He, about Kelly. He's say what, go. What's someone else willing to give him? All right, wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, that's wait, what I'm thinking. All right, say go. Kelly. Stay. All right. Stay. I want him to stay. All right, so all three of us stay. Evaldi, he's gone. Joe. Oh, I want him again like Kelly. I know what stay. you want, but what, is he gone? Or is he here? Yeah, he probably will be gone. Someone will make him an Unfortunately, offer. Unfortunately, he's going to be gone. Someone's going to throw okay. stupid money All right, out. Stephen and Pierce. It's not worth it. Stephen Pierce, again. You know, look, yeah, right. <laughs> we got it. We got we got the best of us. You I'd get the, as I'd best as you can, Stephen Pierce. You know, you don't know what these guys are gonna do in the playoffs. He's got he's he's a proven commodity. But they're not gonna overpay for Stephen Pierce. Throw him a freaking no. bone. Throw him no. a bone. Yeah. So if he ends up, this is a guy who could end up in Arizona. Will with Pedroia a, a big be contract. back? That's a question. Well, yeah, that's for another show. Pomerantz. Now, Joe, we had talked about Drew Pomerantz last year. I mean, excuse me, last yeah. week, and you had said we thought, okay, he's gone, but you had said maybe. He stays, and now all of a sudden I'm thinking that Drew Pomerantz could have a, a little deal that they, you know, if they saw him in the bullpen at the end where he was looking good. So yeah. Pomerantz, stay or go? I think that he stays because no one else offers him anything. He hasn't shown anything, and the Red Sox, if anyone, will throw him something. I think that's right. I think Drew Pomerantz actually stays. I think he's the surprise of this. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think season. anyone else will offer him anything more than a minor I league hope deal. He's gone. Yeah. All right, and Ian Kinsler. Thanks for playing our game, yeah, Ian. Yeah. I, nice knowing you. Right. I would retire for you maybe if I was one, you. But maybe, if, maybe the one guy that didn't step up. He sure didn't. He, he yeah. was a stiff. He's the one guy that didn't have a moment in this series. And he, he was supposed to be the heady veteran uh, that we were bringing Go in. Go through just that lineup. This. Everyone had a moment. And I told you I hated him. And he, and Cora wanted him just to turn the double play, and he right. didn't do that. Everybody, that from the front of the – except for Pomerantz, everyone had a moment except for Kinsler. Okay, we're going to almost... I hate he to, had a moment, but it was a bad one. Yeah, it was a bad one. I hate to end the Red Sox talk, but we'll be talking about them all oh, yeah. off season. But I ask you one question. Are the Red Sox right now, because of the likability factor, and because, of course, they won a World Series, number one in this town? Joe? No. No? I think the Patriots, I think the NFL is just number one across America I, and, and in the hearts of the fans right now. You guys are wrong. The Boston Red Sox are the number one... The Red Sox town, are number one, number one in the hats. The Patriots, the Patriots are, are, are so unlikable. It's absolutely oh, yeah, frightening. That's oh, my God. Well, I don't mean from and a likeability standpoint. I've seen every Patriots game that's ever I been. I from a who tunes into the game standpoint. Oh, I know. Oh, but ratings, the, yeah. The, 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 the pink helmets are still hanging out right now with the Red Sox. And they the will, fantasy people with the, with the Patriots, watch their, their uh, numbers. But the pink helmets will bail on the Patriots so quick it'll be yeah. frightening. All right, so, boys, we go to the New England Patriots, and the Bills game oh. was... Absolutely painful a, to watch. A rock fight. It was. A I watch fight. every second of every game, and I turned it off at halftime. I it was a rock it. fight. And how many times are they going to say that the uh, starting quarterback Anderson for the Bills was taken off the, the golf, golf course? course yeah. Oh my God! Been, First of all, the announcer. He looked were, like he still was on. He the might have been we the worst we get that. I've ever seen in my life, yeah. except for Scott Zolak. He didn't, <laughs> it was like he didn't even care. Dude. That was embarrassing. Yeah. That was not good he for the NFL. Care. He's, I remember he got stuck one time. Snap and he got up, he's like, what, what are you guys letting these people tackle me for? He didn't care. He mailed it in. I feel like yeah. the Patriots are mailing it in personnel-wise because when you go into a game with James White and and a, a guy that's on the practice squad, that that you're not even, Patterson didn't even know how to run with the two, ball. They got him as their running back. Two running backs. On the squad for the game, two running backs. But they're giving it to a guy who doesn't. Well, you're Barker, right. Who's a wide receiver? Barker he was, was there like too, he but he, he didn't return the ball. He ran into a couple plays, right? That was like a high school game. Yeah, that really was like a high school game, right? Patterson was running, standing up straight, looking straight ahead, like he was returning. Have the you game. ever seen a worse offense than that Buffalo offense? Oh, they are abysmal. Pathetic. That, that was. But the Patriots weren't too sharp themselves you know, for you know, a you know, Super Bowl but, contending but you know team. What amazes me? You look at you know LSU, uh, you know Alabama, all these. Tremendous college football players out there, and they can't, they can't put a team together. This is what they, they put went on to the, the field. playoffs last year Which just with shows Tyrod Taylor, and they said, "Okay, see you later, Tyrod." I know you don't get rid of good quarterbacks. Well, I thought right. they have a good young quarterback who's injured, right? Now. Yeah, that Josh Allen. Yeah, 
Okay, guys. Whether he's good or not remains yeah, to be but seen. But he's a top pick, yeah. seventh pick or something like that. We yeah, love overall, Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. We love him. We love Rob Gronkowski. He stinks but, this but year. No, no, he yeah. doesn't. It's it's time. Look. Guys who have had that much punishment at the yeah. tight end position do not have 15-year careers, I hate to tell he you. made one of his this greatest is catches what, of, of his life in that game. Yeah, but this is what, his ninth year, I think? Eighth or ninth year. I think it's time for Rob Gronkowski. This is going to be his last year. That's a prediction. Okay, I hope absolutely. Not, I really enjoy him. I love watching him. Love, love But he doesn't love need watching. it anymore. He doesn't need it financially. He sure doesn't need it physically. Rob Gronkowski can do well, a lot of Well, if you thought about... Retiring last year, you'll definitely think about I it. I think after it might be his year. identity. I think it's very hard to give up a sport that you love, um, mm. it, and it's not just so much the sport; it's the guys, it's the camaraderie, it's all of that. All of a sudden, that season comes around, and you're not in the locker room. I, I yeah. think he sticks around for another year. All right, well there you go. All right, and let's let's already say goodbye to someone. You know, we hardly knew you, but Josh Gordon, good luck with the rest of your life because <laughs> it's really not just a matter of weeks, not a matter of days. Quite possibly, he could already be out of the Patriots locker room right now. That's not going to last much longer. I but, but they need him so much. Badly. I disagree. Uh, you know, Belichick had him out there. They're saying that this was completely erroneous reporting. With they put him stuff. on the podium. Yeah, I know. It's, they just it's was it's, this erroneous reporting? It's tough love. Somebody put well, a little no conspiracy one, theory. No one said it was erroneous reporting. Somebody though. put a little conspiracy theory out there. Well, Belichick, Ian Rappaport is a pretty Belichick respected. Leaked it to somebody to see if it would get into the press. He was trying to find the leak in the locker room. I don't know. Well, uh, Ian Rappaport, he worked for the Herald. He's, he's a respectable guy. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, he's at Gillette Stadium every day, and he would not hey, have They did not get out. a receiver at the trade deadline. I think they're going to ride this pony till the end. I think that the Patriots know that they don't have a Super Bowl contending team, and I mean, and a team that's going to win the Super but, Bowl. But they and they're they're, 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 right. they're they're interested in you their draft what, picks, and know, they weren't given any of those. Here's up. the thing, Scotty: injuries. I mean, Oakland was on a roll last year, and their quarterback got hurt. Or was that two years ago? Two I years mean, ago. injuries are devastating in the NFL. There's a long road to go. And depending on injuries, you, you never know how these things are going to uh, pan out. You know what I mean? I used to look good a year or two ago. And then the all of a sudden hurt. they were down to a... Yeah, a few guys get hurt. Yeah. A few of your key superstars. Yeah, when Watson get hurt, is, absolutely. That is one thing that, that Belichick does. He, he builds a depth typically on teams. A lot of these teams are so dependent on one, two, well, Tim, we have well, no well, depth it's, passes. It's Brady, if Brady goes down. We have no Jay. depth in any of the positions. It's, it's, well, it's frightening. Well, whatever we don't he even does. have first string guys. No. But a lot of teams, <laughs> we really don't even have first string. one or two guys get injured. Of course, Brady is the key. You no, know, but when Brady did anything Look, we don't even have any running backs. We don't have any linebackers. Who this you, team who is, are you afraid of? I'm afraid of the Rams. Who else? The Chiefs. The Chiefs. The we beat the Chiefs. The Jaguars. We beat the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. If we go to Arrowhead, oh, that's not no, no, no. But we, 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 we got to do some horrible defense too. We have a horrible yeah, defense. Yeah. They have a horrible. <coughs> defense. We got to do some predictions. They're playing the Packers. That should be an exciting game. Who holds? This will be like the Chiefs game. Whoever has the ball. Last I'm going to continue with my wrong predictions. Yeah. All right. Have wrong. <laughs> I have it. The Patriots sixty. The Packers <laughs> again fifty nine. I I am going to. I was stick. the only one with a low scoring game. But I'm sticking week. with sixty until the Patriots. Patriots again will score sixty points this season in one game. All right, go ahead, Timmy. I'm gonna say uh, thirty to twenty eight. The Packers. All right, Packers. Joe. Oh no, I, I'm gonna I gotta stick with Brady at the last second coming through. The only reason I'm saying this because every time. All right, I so pick pa against, pa Patriots I'll, win. Every time I pick just, against the Patriots, let me they flip, win. Uh, I'll just flip Tim's score. Okay, go to the Celtics quickly. Uncle Drew scored 31 points he for the Pistons. Good too. It was kind of a thing where he says, who's the boss? Do you know who's why? the boss? Do you know why? He credited Tommy Heinsohn. But Tommy Heinsohn said weight. he looked overweight and out of shape. And, and Uncle Drew came on and said, I have to give thanks to Tommy Heinsohn. He said, I don't I think fat. I was at my physical peak. He was on the Stairmaster. He was on the bicycle all week. He lost five pounds. <laughs> you gotta he look, he this, was a, he, this was quoting him. <laughs> Yeah. Tommy's about 80 pounds. And he got a haircut, too. <laughs> Tommy's we, all know 80 pounds. When, we all know when we gain a little weight, the first thing we yeah. do is get a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> all right, boys. Gordon Hayward, or Grandpa Gordon Hayward, looks slow. He, I, yeah, again, I, again. He's we, not finishing at all. I, I, we think that the games in Utah never really happened. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we think that's fake they news. Just, they just told us about that. <laughs> yeah, them. right. So when is the Gordon Hayward that everybody's talking about, when is he coming? When's that all start coming? I think coming? he's still finding his groove. Okay. Did he ever have a groove? We don't know. <laughs> yeah. so five all right. minutes of one game. Boys, Marcus Morris isn't this good, is he? 
Because Marcus Morris... He looked good last night. I'll tell other than you. Jason Tatum, Marcus, Marcus Morris has been the, the most the, consistent player on the Boston yeah. Celtics these seven games. The man games. can score. You know, he used to go in last year, and he would take every... He never met a shot he didn't like. He was He, he was the one guy who was going in the second team who could score. I'd say, why is he the only one shooting? Because he was the only one that could shoot. But now other guys can shoot. Yeah. But he's full of confidence, and confidence is a giant part of being a basketball player. All right, before we got to go, Marcus Smart is, not, is shooting 34% from the uh, field and 17% from three point land. We'll it's time for Marcus to, to we'll make his him. presence. He's going to get into a fight the next game against the yeah. Bucks. Just bank on it. All right, that's our show for tonight. I want to thank the boys. want to thank everyone behind the scenes. Of course, Handsome Todd and William the Intern. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in again next Wednesday night at 6.30 for another edition of the Grand Centers Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. <laughs> the elephants are in town. Yeah. Here comes the circus. <laughs> <laughs>